What's up, Jammies? Welcome back to another episode of Ricky's Ram Jam presented by Barefoot Wine. Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a safe and happy New Year's. It's been a really upsetting week in the NFL with a tragic injury that happened to Bill's safety, Damar Hamlin. During the Monday night football game, he made a tackle, stood up, and then collapsed to the ground. Both teams and coaches were huddled around him as medical personnel performed CPR for about nine minutes. The ambulance was out on the field. The faces of players were distraught, visually sobbing. It was, you know, the scariest moment in football that I can personally remember. It was so scary, but so uplifting to see the NFL community come together. Every single team, including our own Rams, changed their handle to a photo um, praying for DeMar. A A lot of teams pushed off media availability yesterday or Tuesday didn't release content out of respect for the situation. The entire football community was just grieving as as a whole. Um, so many people were just doing what they can to help. I've read stories, you know, about the, a Vikings player on the D line, Harrison Phillips, bought dinner for Demar Hamlin's family and the Buffalo Bills training staff and the doctors and and nurses working on the ICU floor. He will get we'll get into it with my guest, Nate Burleson, who will be joining me in just a moment, um, just about, you know, what this has meant to the football community at large. He was a standout member of the community. He had a toy drive that his goal was two thousand five hundred dollars. And as we're recording this, it is over six and a half million Many people donating, including Matthew Stafford and a lot of our Rams and just celebrities and big names and company. It's just been so uplifting. And it's the Chasing M's Foundation Community Toy Drive. It's a GoFundMe. I will. I've linked it on my Twitter if you would like to contribute. Um, It's just it's been a tough time and it doesn't feel necessarily right to be just pumping out content about about week 18 and so I'm really thankful for Nate joining me in a moment just to sort of talk you know about about this situation and and what it means to to players to ex-players to current former you know reporters everything um and before we we introduce Nate I want to play a clip from Sean McVay, who addressed the media today, and it was just really moving, and I'd love for you to hear it. I want to start off, and, you know, thoughts and prayers are with Damar Hamlin and his family. Um, You know, when you're watching that the other night and the emotions that you feel, um, you know, sometimes you get so caught up in the competition in this game and you don't realize the sacrifice and the things that these players do to to put themselves out there, you know, for a job, but for also the entertainment, and it is – It's gut-wrenching, it's chilling, it's emotions that can't even begin to describe. And you just pray for a a full recovery. Um, In the midst of some of these things, you do see some good things in terms of the response, the empathy, the ability for people to come together for something that's way bigger than a game of football. And you just pray for a full recovery for him. But I was... um, you know, it, it, it's one of those deals that you, you, you can't even describe it, and you've never seen anything like it. I know I haven't. You're not going to pretend to know how to navigate situations that you've never been through. And this is where you listen, you try to learn, you try to be empathetic to the player's perspective. Um, some of our guys obviously know DeMar, and, you know, it's a close-knit community in this NFL. And, um, you know, I thought Coach McDermott and Coach Taylor um, handled things the right way, but... There's never a right way to, to, you know, to take away the pain that I'm sure so many people are feeling. And, um, you know, you just keep him in our thoughts and prayers. And and I know that's heavy on you guys and all of us and sure, uh, sure keeps things in perspective for you. Okay, joining me today is an old NFL Network colleague of mine, but also someone who has a lot of insight into the league and who also played the game. Nate Burleson, you may know him from CBS Morning, CBS NFL coverage, doing the Nickelodeon games, which was the Christmas Day games and the Rams, previously Good Morning Football. You may also know him from his 11 years as a wide receiver in our league. Nate, the accolades go on and on and on. I had to like pick and choose. I mean, it's crazy. (laughs) <laughs> what's up e how you doing i appreciate you having me on of course of course i i do wish it was you know under different circumstances um th- this week has been heavy it's been yeah. tough trying to figure out the the right thing to do um how how are you first of all i'm doing okay you know anytime i'm asked that question i appreciate it um but you know i, I try to redirect 
all of the attention and the energy, thoughts and prayers, of course, to um, Hamlin and his family. Um, it's been a, a, a tough week for the fraternity of, um, you know, this brotherhood that we call the NFL, because we understand that injuries are going to happen. And I said it on my show, you know, there is a 100 percent chance you'll be injured. It's inevitable. Um, and we know that going in. That's what we signed up for. But what we saw on the field um, when Hamlin went down, it was it was the, the part of the the unwritten agreement that we try not to acknowledge or that we struggle to wrestle with. And um, the whole world was witness. So, you know, initially I'm looking at the players on the field. I mean, you got guys praying, tears running down their face. Um, guys just in, in complete utter shock. And then I start thinking about the coaches and the staff on the field as well, watching that. And then the people in the stands and those at home, um, all the way around, it, it was a traumatic sight to see. Um, but with that said, you know, there's hope. There's a glimmer of hope that um, Hamlin is able to get up, walk away, and um, continue to be the man that he was. Because in the midst of all this, we're hearing so much about him. And that's why you you see this outpouring of support from, you know, inside and outside of the sports space. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not that it would have, it would matter who he is, like if even if he was some sort of, you know, bad person, but it makes right. it even more special and the what he did for his younger brother and how he's, you know, with his parents and the just how he's been giving back to the community. Not that I'm yeah. not taking away from the injury whatsoever, but to just learn even more about this player who frankly like I personally didn't have a lot of backstory on him. And so yeah. I think finding the the positives within this, and I, I talked about it a little bit up top, is just like seeing the league come together, seeing all of these people for for not even in the football community sort of joining in. Like I do think that when you say this glimmer of hope, like – I really do feel like all this positivity that has also come out from such a tragic situation has been like really uplifting and, and amazing to see. Yeah, it's spot, you're, you're spot on because, you know, we saw the league respond in real time. I mean, they got to him quickly. Even his family members were saying right. that they were thankful for how quickly, um, you know, the, the medics and everybody was on the scene um, as traumatic of a sight that was to see. Um, they did the very best they could. And then you you take what he is and what he represents on the field, and then you start to peel back the layers of who he was off the field. Um, you find out that he made it a priority to give back. And then the GoFundMe right. that he started just to raise 2500 bucks for his charity is now, I think, around $6 million last time I heard. Yeah. And that right there, that says a lot. Like every time I hear the number as it grows and grows – um, it warms my heart. Like I get goosebumps because like you said, if this was a regular dude, if this was a guy that was someone who could care less about um, his community or a player that didn't go put the work in on Tuesdays or didn't spend time with kids during the holidays, um, then, you know, we would be as concerned. There still would be the same amount of thoughts and prayers, but there wouldn't be a large GoFundMe out there to support a charity because the charity wouldn't exist. But this is right. a part of what Hamlin represented. And these are people, sports fans um, and people that um, are, are unfamiliar with him as an athlete saying, we want to support him because when he comes out of this, we want him to have that nest egg, whether it's used to fund the rest of his life, because who knows if football is going to be in his future or fund the rest of his endeavors when it comes to his charity. So yeah, in, in, in times of, uh, of dark moments, often we see the the best in humanity. Right, absolutely. And so I, I, you know, you spent eleven years in the league, and um, and yeah. I heard you talking about it actually on on your show as well, just about how injuries that you have had, and that comes with the territory. I mean, I am a Rams podcaster. <laughs> there is never a doubt in my my knock on wood. That when I go to yeah. do a show that I have to compartmentalize and just be like, hey, this is what I love, so I'm, I'm going to do it. And so I, I very, you know, number one, appreciate your insight, but I'm, I'm so interested. From your perspective, you know, can you talk me through like the mindset 
of these players and of you know we're, we're talking you know we're gonna pivot to to week 18 soon like how do yeah. you how do you you know go through this you know compartmentalizing of of what happened and i guess that's like a long-winded question of just no no i, I know, understand i understand exactly yeah. what you're asking um you know before every game i would pray for protection i pray for protection of my teammates the opposing team i wanted us all to get up and walk away um but there was something specific that i prayed about every game and it was that whatever worries anxiety stresses anything that didn't have to do with the game itself allow me to put that in a box compart compartmentalizing put that in a box and then get back to that box when I'm back in the locker room. Mm. And, and that was a prayer in hopes that whatever was weighing on my heart, it could be work related, money related, relationship related. It could be guys dealing with issues that they might have off the field. Um, it could be, uh, you know, the worry of this being your last snap because you're old or it being your best snap because you're young. It could be all these things. There's a wide range of things that these players think about, right? The reason I bring that up is because players are going to have to do that. After what they saw, they're going to have to compartmentalize, put their worries, their stresses, their anxieties, their fears in a box. And I'm going to make a statement. It sounds insensitive, but it is what it is. And that is the show must go on. And that is not being insensitive to DeMar Hamlin and his situation and his family. Please don't take it the wrong way. I'm not being um, dismissive. I understand the weight of what is going on and what he's going through. But we get paid to do this job. And we understand at any given moment, you can see a guy tear his ACL, snap a leg, get a concussion, wobble off the field, get taken off on a stretcher. Um, and then we have to turn around and get paid to do the job, which is go out there, perform at a high level, and then win the game. It, it's it's just like anything else. You said, yeah, I, I'm, just a, I'm just a podcaster, you know. Um, but with that said, if something happened at your workplace – and you saw a coworker fall off a ladder, snap something, or fall down some stairs and get a concussion, or you're in the parking lot and someone gets hit by a car. I'm not trying to take this to a dark place, but I want to make it relatable to everybody that's listening and watching, is that eventually the goal is for you to get back to work. But what happens in corporate America, those employees oftentimes we hope, fingers crossed, that you are met with the opportunity to, to seek therapy and sit down with someone and work out all of these emotions. So when you're back at work, you have a freedom to do your job, um, both physically and mentally. Now let's bring it all full circle. I just hope that when it comes to the Bengals and the Bills, and I know this because uh, you know I, I, I have some insight in, inside these organizations is that they will offer someone for these athletes to sit down and talk about what they saw, how they feel, how they feel moving forward. If they have any reservations about stepping back on the field for practice or on game day, if they have reservations about moving on with their careers. Um, and then you can right. unpack all of that, get back on the field and then hopefully do your job. I mean, it feels even trivial to t to talk about it when I'm looking to to week 18 and you know the Rams the, like this right. this was a big a big game for Bobby Wagner to go back yeah. to Seattle yeah. for the first time. Still and, is and still he, is a big game. It still yeah. is. It still is. But I I also I would love to get your insight on on him as as a leader and everything too. And if you think that. Maybe there is some sort of, you know, rallying that we will see from a lot of men across the league for this for this game. Um, you know, for for week eighteen in general. I guess yeah, like well, what are the trepidations? Yeah, I, do you I, think, I think that this? Yeah, I think there will be uh, 
a continuing out, outpouring of support. I think there'll, there'll be a lot of guys acknowledging DeMar Hamlin and representing him, throwing up his number, um, and rightfully so. And we'll do that as long as it takes to, to, to get him back on his feet. But, I, you know, speaking specifically on B-Wags, like, he hasn't lost a step, man. He is so damn good. You know, I, I've been watching him for years, and he's truly one of the greats. You know, I, I, I believe that um, he is a Hall of Famer. You know, he's he's played at such a high level for so long and still continues to. You know, we were talking before the last game, um, and uh, B-Wags was, uh, he was talking about, you know, facing uh, the the Broncos. And, right. um, and I'm like, hey, so, so what do you got going on, man? I mean, you got anything planned? You know, Russell was one of those guys you couldn't hit for a long time. And, you know, I, it, it was more light nature because I was covering for Nickelodeon. It wasn't like I was right. preparing hardcore X's and O's for the CBS broadcast. <laughs> and, you know, so he, you know, he, he, he jokingly responded by saying, yeah, no, I, I used to tell him for years how much, um, how, how hard I would play and how well I would play against him. And I was like, so are you saying you're going to get a fumble recovery, scoop a score, interception or something? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to do that. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, if you do, you know what I'm saying, you got to bring it, bring the ball up to me in the suite. Now, I don't know where we're going to be placed at, but if I'm close to the field, you got to bring it to me. So I, the game happened. Of course, the result was the result. The Rams absolutely balled out, and he got that pick. I get a call that night. This is this is uh, the Christmas evening. I'm getting ready to go no. to dinner with my family, and uh, and I'm talking with my, my son, Nehemiah, who loves the Seahawks. I'm like, yo, B-Wags called me. He's like, yo, what do you want? That's my guy. What? Tell B-Wags I said what's up. And I was like, yo, what up, man? He's like, I was looking for you. I was trying to bring you that football. That interception was for you. So that's my B-Wag story for the day. I love that. Um, just just a great dude, man. And, um, you know, he's he he should get the hero's welcome, um, you know, in anywhere that he has uh, set his foot, set his right. feet, um, because he's played at such a such a high level and, and it's been such a representation of what uh, old school, new school linebacker hybrid is. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so if the Rams win – the Seahawks miss miss out on the playoffs. So yeah. you've probably been on both sides of this. Like, can you yeah. describe the mindset of each team heading into this game? Like the Seahawks are looking to clinch and the Rams are looking to spoil. There's a lot of emotion following this week and everything. It's Bobby's first time back in Seattle after 10 yeah. years with the club. Like this, there is a lot. You talk about boxes. Like there are a lot of boxes heading into this weekend. There's a lot of drama involved. If I'm Seattle, yeah. um, you know, which I've been in that position, you got to uh, control your own destiny um, and and go out there and get the dub. Um, that way you make it into the playoffs. The mindset is to focus on the opponent, not the playoffs, because the opponent is there to punch you in the mouth while you're not looking. Uh, and, and you can't think about anything other than getting the job done. Now, on the flip side... To be honest, there's less pressure on the Rams. Of course, you're playing spoiler, right? You have nothing to lose. And I got to be honest, out of those two situations, the one that was more fun was playing the villain. Because, right. listen, when you, when you got to win and end, it's it's a lot harder than people think. They're like, oh, man, you just got to win. Just handle your business. It's what you get paid to do. Get the dub. We're in the postseason. It's not that simple, man. You're so stressed all week. You're game planning. The coaches feel it. They're trying to have the, the best game plan. You're playing against an opponent that knows you like the back of their hand. So there's all these things. And you know what the narrative is going to be like if you don't win. It's like, oh, you blew it. You choked. All of that. Y'all smoked your opportunity. But on the flip side, like I remember being in that position where we were in that locker room like, look, Yo, I don't know who you guys are going to choose, but pick a villain in any movie and embody that today. Because that's what we're doing. We're about to rain on their parade. Excuse my language. Piss in their cereal. We're going to make sure they have the worst day ever. And it's, it's kind of twisted to think like that. But I'm telling you, when it's competitive and you're playing up against a team, especially if you don't like them, 
Man, there's nothing better than to seeing them walk off the field dejected, knowing that you sent them home. All is fair in football. So you got to go out there and, and, and do whatever it takes. But it, it is it is going to be an interesting one, that's for sure. Yeah, no, I, I cannot wait to see – um, see this game and see see Bobby there and just just all of the the tributes to bring it back circle. I I think that football is such a beautiful game and it really is more than just a sport. It is it's humanity and it is like you said a fraternity, but also with the community at large too. Just just everything riding into this and um, I know I echo your sentiments with with prayers for Demar and and. I'm hearing some positive things, so we keep praying that that is on on the positive direction. But I I wish you the best of luck this weekend. I know that you'll be covering a bunch of it, and you, yeah. you never stop. Um, so I I appreciate your time, Nate, and just your insight as always. And it was great to see you. And um, I hope you're you're you know doing well and and have a great weekend. No doubt, keep killing it. You're doing your thing, and shout out to the Rams. You came off with one hell of a season, winning the Super Bowl. It's been a rough year. We know that injuries played a significant role, from your starting Huge. quarterback to your number one wide receiver, all the way around, even to your offensive line. But next next man up, guy stepped up, made play. Shout out to Baker Mayfield coming in and doing yeah. um, what seemed impossible on a couple of days' notice. Allen Robinson, want to see him do a little bit more in year two. Um, and, of course, you got studs on the defensive side of the ball. Shout out to Sean McVay, who I like to call Doogie Howser, one of my favorite dudes in the business. So, um, yeah, shout out to the Rams. Wait, where's that nickname come from? Well, you know, Doogie Howser, you're a little bit younger than me. It was an old school <laughs> show with Neil Patrick Harris where he was like this whiz kid who was like 16, but he graduated high school and college and became a doctor. So he's like this teenager inside a hospital. You got to just look up Doogie Howser. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's, it's a great okay. reference. Okay, it fits. If, it you, fits. if you see Sean McVay, you'd be like, hey, Nate called you Doogie Howser. He'll giggle and know about it. Does he know? He knows that that's what you call him? Yeah, I think he's heard he's heard me say that before. But I'm not the first one and only one. It's basically calling him a boy genius. And you know, yeah, he's got a side. Even though he has more scruff on his face and more cloth right. in his hair, he still loves hearing that he's a boy genius. Oh yeah, he's trying to hide it, grow out the beard a little bit, play it smooth. But we yeah, we all know. Yeah, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Thanks, thank you so much. Of course, of course, y'all have a good one. There he goes, and what a perfect person to pair with our barefoot wine. As you know, Jammies, wine and football can be complicated, but they should be enjoyed together. They don't have to be complex. All you need is your barefoot wine, a good glass of barefoot, your football, your friends, your family. Now is a time more than ever that we need to come together and be together, be there for one another to pick each other up, and what better thing to do than have a glass of barefoot wine. Okay, so here is the easy to enjoy question of the week. So Jammies, if you had to assign a wine to this Ram season, what would it be and why? And, and I'll give you mine. This isn't a barefoot wine currently, but maybe it needs to be. Hear me out. I'm going to make a, like a red blend, a Zinfandel, which is a little zesty. It has a little spunk. I'm going to mix in a little Merlot because of its spice. There were some spicy moments this season. And then I'm going to top it off with a Cab Sav. We've really gotten to see these young guys step up. And get this, a Cab Sav is full-bodied, wishing health on all of our guys with a younger cab. So like I said, we've gotten to see these young guys step up and have invaluable playing time. It's it's a blend of the season, the good, the bad, the beautiful. We're better off from it. And I'm going to call this blend the Ram Red. Now, I don't know if that's a good name, work and title. We will figure that out together. Jamie's let me know. If you had to assign a wine to this year's Ram season, what would it be and why? Okay, that does it for this week's Ricky's Ram Jam. Sending love and happiness and strength to everyone once again. Um, we're all rooting for you, Damar. And that's it for us. Let's ram it. Mm-hmm.